So you want to grow your cannabis plants at normal atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide that doesn't require any additional enrichment. Plants have been doing just fine on this level of carbon dioxide for many, many, many years. All outdoor plants are subject to atmospheric levels. However, there's a couple things you should keep in mind. So let's look at growing plants uh, at atmospheric carbon dioxide levels related to cannabis production. And we talk about atmospheric conditions, they have been on the rise here. We can see some circulation, but overall we do see a kind of, in this example, a kind of an increase here, a linear progression. Running around that kind of, around that 400-ish parts per million would be considered atmospheric levels. Now, as I said, I'm gonna use at 400 parts per million to be that normal atmospheric levels. Keep in mind that cannabis has been grown at atmospheric levels carbon dioxide for thousands of years. All outdoor plants, that's what they're subject to. This can produce quality yields, assuming no other factors are limiting. And as I said, atmospheric conditions are uh, on the rise and they are varying year to year. So if we are growing in atmospheric conditions, something we want to keep in mind is air circulation. So by simply circulating air around the canvas plant, a grower can deliver 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide. Fans and air circulation are important components of any growing environment, so this supplementation of carbon dioxide comes as a bonus. You don't want to have the air be stagnant because plants can consume the carbon dioxide and actually reduce those levels. So by circulating air, particularly bringing outside air in, it's a great way to ensure sure they're constantly getting that normal about 400 parts per million atmospheric levels. The growing plants at these atmospheric levels, uh, there's no need for any additional equipment or monitoring devices. This makes a very easy grow and this could be an indoor grow, but this could also be an outdoor grow, probably a little easier in the outdoor grow, but even indoor grow, keep that air moving, keep bringing air out from the outside in to ensure your growing environment is at least at atmospheric levels because extensive plant canopies can cause that to drop below. Now, there are some challenges with atmospheric uh, conditions. Uh, if air ventilation is not sufficient while plants are consuming large quantities of carbon dioxide, this can cause those carbon dioxide levels to drop below atmospheric conditions, which is around 400 parts per million. If levels drop below 250 parts per million or lower, this will actually result in plant stunting. With no monitoring, it can be difficult to know if this happens, uh, so just constantly keep air moving around. Now we see the kind of the example here with a lettuce crop. Many crops, like lettuce, can benefit from supplementation of carbon dioxide. Plant on the left received less than 400 parts per million, and the plant below here received 500 parts per million, which again is above atmospheric levels, but we can see the difference here, at least visually. Now for indoor uh, conditions, uh, keep in mind with indoor uh, indoors, lighting needs to be supplemented as well. If only using atmospheric conditions, lower light intensities can potentially be used because even under 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide, plants will be carbon dioxide limited if given higher, which is considered above my 900 micromoles of light levels. So just keep that in mind that if you're seeing different lights for sale, a high intensity light, um, if they may recommend with carbon dioxide because plants at atmospheric levels cannot really use it much above 900 micromoles. So these atmospheric levels, uh, normal atmospheric levels can produce good yields as growers have been working with this for many years. However, this should be considered the standard or control uh, production levels because if you add carbon dioxide, you have the potential to increase your yields from here.